In this video, we'll find the volume of the region bounded by these three equations here, these three surfaces, in this case, this blue wedge-shaped region here that's outlined here in three dimensions. Uh, this is a follow-up of the previous video where we did the integration in the order dz, dy, and dx. Just to illustrate how you might vary these kind of calculations, um, we did that by uh, projecting onto the xy plane, and in doing so, we found the limits of integration for x and y first, and then found the z limits of integration. Instead, why don't we uh, look at integrating in the order dy, dz, and dx, and just following the analogy above, why don't we project onto the xz plane to determine the limits of integration for x and z first, and that occurs when y is equal to zero. We'll look at that picture, and then we'll use that to determine the limits of integration for y. So when I project onto the uh, xz plane, I'm setting y equal to zero, and that means all the points parallel to the x and z axis, containing the x and z axis, and that's this red plane here. We're going to project all the points in my blue region back onto that plane where y is equal to zero, and we'll draw that picture here with the x-axis and the z-axis uh, in two dimensions below. Now, you, I, it's a good idea to take a, a minute just to visually think about what that's going to look like and see if you can get a, a rough idea of what it's going to look like. And you might imagine yourself standing right here on the y-axis some distance away from the figure and looking straight down the y-axis and imagining what that shadow, that projection would look like on the wall behind you, the xz plane. But I'm going to do it algebraically. And I'm going to imagine that I have a point P on this outer boundary here, and it has an x-coordinate, a y-coordinate, and a z-coordinate. And I want to imagine what happens when I take that point and project it down to where the y-coordinate is equal to zero. What does that point correspond to? Because uh, that point is on the blue parabola here where y is equal to x squared, once I know its x-coordinate, I know its y-coordinate must be the square x squared. Because it's on the top of the surface where z is equal to 1 minus y, once I know the y-coordinate, which is x squared, the z-coordinate must be 1 minus x squared. So the point here living on this uh, outer edge of the, of the surface that we're trying to find the volume of has coordinates x, x squared, and 1 minus x squared. When we project that point onto the xz plane, we essentially are ignoring the y-coordinate and just looking at the x and the z-coordinates. So the projection of that point projects onto the point xz where the x-coordinate is x and the, the z-coordinate is 1 minus x squared. And so what we're saying here is that the z-coordinate must satisfy this equation. z is equal to 1 minus x squared. And I go and I plot that on the z-x-axis. That's a parabola opening downwards z equals to 1 minus x squared, and that region that I've shaded there is the projection onto that back plane. I'm now going to set up the uh, integral, and because I have chosen to do x last, I'm going to find the x limits of integration first, so x will go from minus 1 to 1. Take a generic value of x now and let it pass through your region. The z value goes at z equal to 0 and ends at z equal to 1 minus x squared at the parabola. And now what we'll do is we'll fix a point xz in that region that I've shaded in that projection. And there it is in the two-dimensional picture. In the three-dimensional picture, it's something back here with a y-coordinate equal to 0. And we're going to extend a line parallel to the y-axis and passing through my region and look at where it enters the region and where it exits. It enters here at the back. That back part is formed by the parabola y equal to x squared. And it exits here at the top where the surface is meeting z equal to 1 minus y. So my y values will extend between x squared, the back, and the plane, 1 minus z. And that tells me my limits of integration. It's just a matter of writing down the triple integral now. x goes from minus 1 to 1, y goes to 0 to 1 minus x squared, I'm sorry, z does, and then y goes from x squared to 1 minus z. As an exercise, and I strongly encourage you to do this, you might set it up in a different order. 
order dx, dz, and dy, and you would do that by projecting onto the yz plane and determining the limits of integration there first, and then figuring out x from there in a manner similar to what we did above.